Thank you for stopping by the 741 channel. Today's project is going to be to take a look at this HP Envy laptop that is throwing a cooling fan error code when I boot it up. So I'll power the computer on and you should see that pretty much right away I end up getting an error message which is a system fan 90B and you can pause the video and read all of that but basically what it's saying is that an internal fan is not working or not working properly. So I've tried a few basic things with the laptop just to see if I could get that message to clear and one of those was to blow some air into the side vents here to try and dislodge any dust or anything that might be in there and uh, that didn't seem to have any effect so uh, I think the next step is going to be to take it apart and have a look inside. So I've got the laptop flipped over and the first thing that I'll do is pop the battery off and set that aside. It looks like there's a separate panel here that can also come off so I may try and remove this first. You can Maybe you can see in the camera here there's sort of a seam and then there's uh, a screw here so it looks like maybe this will come off first. So there was just the one screw on the back here and it looks like that's even captive. It doesn't come all the way out. Now this just seems like it pops up with some locking tabs. And it looks like that gives me access to the hard drive, the memory, and things like that. Everything looks pretty clean in here and uh, I don't see any access to any fans either. So. Uh, it looks like I'm going to just have to keep going and remove the whole bottom cover here, like I said before. Okay, so I think I've got all the screws out, and the first thing that's going to come out is this metal bracket. So I'm working on getting the case off, and I've got a lot of screws out, and it looks like I'm going to need to take the hard drive out. So I've just gently pried this up out of the spot where it was, and then there's a connector on here. There, and then now the, the hard drive is free. I want to set that aside gently over there. And there are some more screws under where the hard drive was. So I've got the screws out from under where the hard drive was, and I think I've got all the other screws out too. And I've been making progress lifting this up slowly. There's a lot of little uh, clips along the side where it's clipped into the main chassis of the laptop. So I'm just trying to go slow and just pry them out gently. Uh, but one thing I've noticed is the hard drive cable here is tacked down to the bottom case and then is connected with a ZIF connector to the main board or A board in there that does not come with the bottom of the case here. So, but what I think I'm going to do is flip up the ZIF connector. So here's a closer look at what I'm going to do here. This is the uh, hard drive cable that comes here. It's got kind of a funny bend in it and then it goes into this connector here which is sort of a white body with a black latch. So what I'll do is I'll take this X-Acto blade here and I'll just flip up the latch. I'm going to be careful not to cut the cable or anything with this. This is all, uh, you know, obviously sharp. But I'm just using it to pry up that latch. And once that latch is pried up this will just come right out. You can see that on the other side there should just be some exposed fingers that make contact with the connector. So I'm going to be careful of this so that I don't mash up the end of it or anything like that. But now that it's free, I can continue to work on removing the bottom cover here. It looks like there may be another wire that I'll need to deal with, but that one looks like a conventional uh, connector. So there is one more wire here that's going to need to come out, and that's a conventional wire. I'm going to use this screwdriver to help push this out and it looks like that's got it. So now it also looks like I need to eject the CD tray. I should have done that in the first place or DVD tray or whatever this is. Now there's a little hole in here so that you can manually eject this with a paper clip or something like it. But it doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. Okay, so I've got that released and it looks like there's a hidden screw under here and that's why I wasn't able to get this thing up any higher. No, nope, there are actually three hidden screws in here. So I'm going to push that back. No, I'm not going to latch it, but I'll push it back. So 
So it looks like there's one more ZIF cable that needs to come up. And this one's sort of in the middle of the machine um, by the memory. So I was able to just flip that up as you saw. And once again, the ZIF cable will just kind of come out and up and away. You can see the fingers there on that side of the cable. So I'm still trying to lift this up and it just feels like it's hanging up on this back corner for some reason. There's no other screws there. So I'm not sure if there's a screw somewhere else that I'm missing or if it's just clipped in at that point. But it just doesn't want to come. It feels like there's a screw there. And maybe there's one more hidden that I'm not seeing but as you can see I've got this up now and it looks like I did screw this up somehow. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what's going on here but it looks like the back hinges here were somehow attached with screws but I'm not sure if I was supposed to pull off the rubber feet on the back to get at those screws or what but it looks like they pulled out of the base plastic here uh, and this side I don't know this side was different I may end up having to epoxy that in place or something later uh, anyhow that, that wasn't the right way to take it apart apparently so um, duly noted for next time anyway here's the fan and I did sort of play with this with my finger already and when I first tried to turn it it didn't want to turn but it quickly freed itself up and it seems like it's okay now it seems like it's spinning there is a lot an awful lot of dust in here so a couple things to note here um, as you can see I've got the fan removed this is where it would be uh, and this is sort of like a uh, I guess you could call it a filter, but it's just a series of fins that sit here between the uh, fan and the side of the um, laptop case. And you can see this is full of dust, which is sort of to be expected. So even if that fan was spinning at normal speed, the airflow might not be quite right because this thing is kind of plugged with dust. But I should be able to at least clean this up. I'm going to try and get my small vacuum. The best thing to use on this would probably be one of those cans of compressed air to really get in there and shoot dry, clean air through there to clean all those fins out, but I don't have any of that on hand. Now, one other thing to note, and I'm not sure if it's visible there, when I pulled the fan out, this little piece of plastic fell out. And I believe that's from over here on the side where the hinge is, which was broken. And after talking with my wife about this a little bit, this is a, her laptop, she said that she heard something rattling around in here. And it could be that this piece of plastic was in there. This side of the hinge may have already been broken. I may not have broken this. Uh, it's possible that she might have dropped this or banged it into something and this side cracked. I'm fairly certain I broke this side, <laughs> but I think this side might have been broken before I got into it. And this little piece of plastic that was in there could have been what was holding the fan up. Here's a look at the fan itself and you can see there's really not a whole lot to it. There's some sort of EMI gasketing tape holding it together. Uh, it's a little bit dusty inside. There was a little bit more dust in there when I first took it out but I I got rid of that dust. But it does feel like it's spinning okay. I don't feel any resistance or anything like that so it seems like maybe that little piece of plastic is what was causing the problem and was keeping it from spinning. So I've got this all cleaned up inside as best I can with what I've got. Um, but I'm going to put the fan back in. And I'm just going to drop this back in where it was. And I'm going to make sure I reseat the tape. You can see that there's little bits of um, foil tape here and then these little bits of tape that are holding the fan together are um, also metalized and that's not only just to hold the fan together, but that's also for EMI shielding. So anyway, now that I've got that in place, I'm going to reconnect the wire harness here for the fan to the motherboard, make sure everything's in place, and I will now reinsert the three screws that held it on originally. There's one there, one there, and one back here somewhere. The next thing that I'll do is start to bring the case back down to where it belongs. And before I start putting screws in, I'm going to reattach the wires that I removed. There was the one traditional wire here, and then there were the couple of ribbon cables that go into the ZIF connectors. This one here for the hard drive, and this one over here that goes to the memory board. 
Okay, now that that wire is in place, I'm gonna fix this speaker that fell out. Okay, and then I'm gonna just gonna kinda gently lower this in place. I wanna make sure that these ZIF wires don't get pinched or otherwise obstructed. I'm gonna get this seated back in. I'm gonna push on the sides here. You can kinda hear it clipping itself back in. All the little side clips are re-engaging. Now, of course, where it's broken over here on the hinge side, it's maybe not going to seat quite the way that it should, but we'll try and get it as best as we can here. Okay, now with all those sides clipped in, I'm going to start working on putting the screws back in place. Now there were a few spots here on the inner part of the case where the hard drive was and in here that had shorter, smaller screws. And then there was one longer screw over here on the side. And I've kept those all sort of isolated. I kind of know which are which, but I'm going to still try and be careful and make sure I get the right screws where they go here. Um, so I'll put those in and then uh, we'll come back and do the next step. So I've got all the screws back in, and I think I've got them all in the right places. I've got this metal bracket back in as well. So now I'm just going to reconnect all the wires that I haven't already connected. The first one is going to be this little wire, and that kind of goes down here. I have to pull that sticker up out of the way. And I'll reseat that and get it down in. Now I have this ZIF cable, and again this is one of those flip up latches. So I'm going to make sure that the, the latch is flipped up and then I'm just going to kind of seat this down and very gently put it in. Now these are called ZIF connectors for a reason, ZIF standing for zero insertion force. So if you have to push this in, you're not doing something right or something is bound up or whatever. So once that's sort of in where it needs to go, I'll then just flip that latch over and that puts the force on the cable and keeps it mated into the connector. Now over here I've already reconnected the wire for the speakers as I showed earlier but I need to do this ZIF connector here for the hard drive and again this is just going to seat down in place and then I'll flip the latch over and it should be locked into position. Now this one's got that funny bend in it. I don't really like that too much, but it is what it is. Okay, next thing that I'll do is reinstall the hard drive. So that's just going to come over here. I'm going to plug this in. And with that plugged in, I'm just going to seat this in to its home. Make sure I don't pinch anything. And that's good and seated. And now I'll put this cover back on. And that's just got some tabs that line up. And now it'll probably snap into place here. Okay, and then there was the one captive screw that needs to be locked down. And now the last step will be to reinstall the battery. So that should do it. Let's fire this thing up and see what happens. So as you can see here, the computer is booted up. I've got it on the internet here. Everything seems to be working. keyboard seems to work and this is even a touch screen computer so um, you can see that the touch screen seems to work I can tap on things and uh, everything seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing and I'm not getting any error messages about the fan or anything and I've put my ear over here and it sounds like it's running smoothly so I really think the problem with it was that piece of plastic that was in there so that all seems to be working okay now 
The only problem with it now are the hinge mounts back here. And again, I think one of them was already broken, and that was what was causing the problem with the fan. That little piece of plastic had gotten in there. Um, but then my subsequent fooling around with it made the other one worse. So now when I sort of move this, it kind of binds and, and is all screwed up in there. So what I might do now is take the uh, computer apart and see if I can do something with those hinges and glue those bases back into the plastic or something just to get it um, a little more stable. But for right now at least it's functional. The computer is usable. My wife will be able to do stuff with it again. She'll just have to be careful when she opens and closes the lid. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.